Assalamu alaikum respected doctors welcome to my youtube channel in the base and bds lectures today is the seventh video of rapid revision course of removable partial danger prosthodontics which is very important for nle exam mds as well as for final year students now in this video we will discuss about direct retainers we will discuss about direct retainers definition and different types of retention then types of retainers and their details now first we start from what is direct retainers a direct retainer is a unit of partial denture that engages an abutment tooth in such a manner as to resist displacement of denture away from basal seat mean a direct retainer is a unit of partial denture that engages an abutment tooth in such a manner as to resist displacement of denture mean direct retainer resist displacement of denture away from basal seat it provide retention to removable partial denture mean direct retainers provide retention retention in rpd removable partial denture can be of three types number one primary retention second secondary retention third is a mechanical retention first is primary retention it is a mechanical and by means of providing direct retainer on the abutments mean primary retention is mechanical and it is achieved by direct retainers on the abutment tooth second is secondary retention it is uh, secondary retention we achieve by major and minor connector it is by the intimate contact of the major connector with the underlying tissue and by the minor connector in contact with guiding planes mean major connector in contact with underlying tissue and minor connector in contact with the guiding planes provide secondary retention third is the mechanical retention it is achieved by direct retainer friction engaging a depression and abutment mean when we place a direct retainer we engage a direct retainer in a depression and abutment uh, or engaging in undercut and abutment now come to the types of retainers now there are two types of retainers number one is intracoronal and second is extra coronal coronal mean corona up tooth intracoronal this type of retainer we give inside the crown in abutment to intracoronal and extra coronal they are placed outside the tooth now first intracoronal they are cast or attached inside tooth mean inside tooth for example key and key way with opposing uh with opposing parallel vertical wall to resist displacement they are also called precision attachments remember intracoronal uh, retainers are also known as precision attachment second type is the extra coronal they are placed outside the tooth for example class assembly now uh, look at diagram below on the right side there is a intracoronal which have key and key way mean uh, uh, in uh, the middle diagram which uh, uh, on the tooth uh, there is a key way mean hole and the key of the uh, rpd will be attached here this is intracoronal mean we give inside the crown next uh, on the left side there is a tooth and in uh, bluish green there is a class assembly which are act as a extra coronal retainer because we give outside that tooth now uh, there are two types extra coronal retainer and intra coronal now first we discuss about in detail about intra coronal retainers the principle of intra internal attachment was first given by dr herman e in 1906 the retainer consists of male and female component look at in this diagram intracoronal retainer male and female component the female part which is a key way which a hole are present in the tooth and the male part key is 
inserted in this hole which uh, are attached with the rpd now the retainer consists of male and female components key and keyway which are either custom made or prefabricated prefabricated are already prepared and custom made we prepared in lab female part act as a receptacle and it's located within the crown because they are receptor they receive the key within the crown within the crown and the male component is attached to the rpd retention is achieved by wedging or binding action of processes against the vertical dislodging forces now come to the advantages of indirect retainers indirect retainers are aesthetically superior to the extra coronal attachment as visible cluster paris arm is eliminated the first advantage of intra coronal retainer is aesthetically superior because they are inside the tooth they are le uh, less visible the extra coronal retainer are visible because they have clasp second advantage it provide horizontal stabilization now come to the disadvantages of intra coronal retainer number 1 prone to wearing up the component parts uh because uh, in uh, because uh, they are uh, given inside the tooth uh, there will be uh, we they are prone to wearing up the component parts uh, second is difficult to repair if they break the repair will be difficult next is costly and require precision fabrication because they are costly and require master a uh, advanced skill in fabrication next is complicated laboratory procedure these are the disadvantages now come to the contraindication intra coronal retainer are contraindicated in young patients with large pulp horn because there is a chances of exposure of the pulp second when there is a short clinical crown again their uh, intra coronal retainer is contraindicated due to less crown height now come to the extra coronal extra coronal retainer retentive clasp assembly or external attachment remember extra coronal retainer is a uh, consist of clasp assembly or also known as mean extra coronal retainer or clasp assembly or also known as external attachment like intra coronal retainer uh, uh, retainer are also known as internal or precision att attachment extra coronal retainer are also known as uh, external attachment or retentive clasp assembly now come to the detail uh, of extra coronal retainer which is clasp assembly now uh, we will discuss uh, first definition of clasp assembly then parts of uh, clasp assembly then requirement of clasp assembly first definition of clasp assembly what is clasp assembly clasp assembly is defined as the part of a removable dental processes that act as a direct retainer or stabilizer for processes by partially encompassing or contacting an abutment tooth component of the clasp assembly include clasp the reciprocal clasp cingulum incisal or occlusal rest and the minor connector mean there are four component of clasp assembly number 1 is the rest it may uh, the number 1 is the clasp second is the reciprocal clasp clasp are given on buccal side and reciprocal clasp are given on lingual side opposite to the, to the clasp and third is the rest and fourth is the minor connector remember in our march nle exam this question was come uh parts of clasp assembly they given different parts and one is minor connector was mentioned mean there are four parts of clasp assembly number one is the clasp second is the reciprocal clasp third is the rest and fourth is the minor connector these are the component of the clasp assembly now clasp assembly act as a direct extra coronal retainer now come to the parts of clasp assembly parts of clasp assembly in figure 16.5 diagram showing parts of clasp assembly number 1 is the rest 
look at the diagram rest rest uh, we already studied in sixth video about rest and its types rest it provide vertical support second is the part is the body look at the diagram body body it connect rest and shoulder up class to minor connector mean body connect three thing minor connector class shoulder uh, shoulder up class and rest third is the shoulder it connect body to class terminal mean shoulder look at the diagram shoulder connect body to the class terminal mean class end next is the reciprocal arm reciprocal arm which is uh, opposite mean reciprocal class uh, mean it is a uh, it given opposite to, to the um, direct uh, mean uh, uh, clasp which is given on uh, buckle side reciprocal arm look at the diagram reciprocal arm which is opposite to the retentive arm retentive arm given on buckle side which is uh, uh, greenish gray and reciprocal arm are highlighted in diagram by white color and this is given on and lingual side now a reciprocal arm it must be rigid and should lie above the height of the contour remember what is height of a contour the the bulge area on the tooth the bulge area on the tooth is known as height of contour and reciprocal arm must be rigid and should lie above the height of contour but the retentive terminal is opposite remember reciprocal arm always must be rigid and should lie above the height of contour but the retentive terminal of retentive clasp is given always on buccal side and below the height of contour now uh, come to the retentive arm it consists of shoulder and retentive terminal it lie above the height of contour remember a reciprocal arm always must be rigid and given on the above height of contour next is the retentive arm it also given about height of contour but the retentive terminal will be always below height of contour this is in six point now the retentive arm it consists of shoulder look at diagram retentive arm retentive arm it consists of shoulder and retentive terminal it lie above the height of contour next is the retentive terminal it lie below the height of contour and provide retention therefore they given in below the height of contour in order to provide retention next is the minor connector minor connector in figure look at diagram minor connector it connect body of clasp to the other part of the processes next is the approach arm approach arm is also a minor connector it is the only minor connector which are flexible and it's a component of the bar clasp these all are of the these all are uh, the parts of the clasp assembly now the components of clasp assembly are four and the parts of clasp assembly are eight in number now come to the requirements of the class assembly what are the requirements of class assembly number one the class assembly should satisfy the following requirements number one is the retention the first requirement of the class assembly is retention retentive terminal of the retentive arm is flexible and lie in the undercut region and provide retention to the processes mean the class assembly provide retention with the help of retentive terminal which always you below the height of contour and it pro in the undercut region it provides retention to the processes now the amount of retention depend upon the flexibility of the clasp arm depth of undercut and the length of the clasp arm below the height of contour mean the amount of retention provided by a retentive terminal are uh, depend upon the flexibility of the uh, clasp arm depth of the undercut 
and the length of the clasp are below the head of the cotor retentive undercut for cast chrome metal is retentive undercut for cast chrome metal is 0.010 inch per wrought metal it is 0.020 inch and per cast coal it is 0.015 inch clasp flexibility flexibility depend upon length of the clasp diameter taper cross sectional diameter and the material clasp flexibility is directly proportional to the cube of the length of the clasp i mean clasp flexibility is directly proportional to the cube of the length of the clasp it is inversely proportional to the diameter of the clasp if there is a more diameter of the clasp there will be less flexibility if there is a more length of the clasp there will be more flexibility a uh, round clasp uh, round clasp has greater flexibility round clasp as it can flex in all special plane in comparison to the half round clasp which can flex only in single plane I mean the round clasp has greater flexibility as compared to a uh, half round clasp now the second requ requirement of the uh, clasp assembly is stability all the component of the mean stability mean resistance to horizontal dislodging forces all the components of the clasp except the retentive terminal provide stability to the process remember all the component of the clasp assembly or clasp except the retentive terminal provide stability to the processes but the retentive terminal provide retention now circum circumferential clasp provide the maximum stability because of its rigid shoulder if mcqs come which type of clasp provide the maximum stability answer will be circumferential clasp because of its rigid shoulder the next uh, requirement is the support a uh, support mean uh, vertical support rest may it may be a closal cingulum or incisal provide the vertical support to the processes next is the reciprocation reciprocation mean a position it is provided by a reciprocal arm which is position opposite to the retentive arm this is a retentive arm and reciprocal arm is opposite to the retentive arm retentive arm given on buccal side and re reciprocal arm we can are lingual side mean uh, the forces uh, which produced due to retentive arm will be compensated by reciprocal arm the reciprocal arm should be rigid and should always lie about up height of cotor remember reciprocal arm always be rigid should be rigid and should always lie about height of cotor but the uh, uh, the retentive terminal will be uh, always below the height of contour it should touch before the retentive arm touch during processes placement mean during processes placement the reciprocal arm should touch before the retentive arm touch during processes placement it stabilizes the denture against the horizontal moment next uh, requirement is the insert meant mean to surround the tooth each clasp should encircle more than 180 degree of the abutment tooth each clasp should encircle the then more more than 180 degree of the abutment tooth continuous encircle encirclement as in the case of circumferential clasp mean circumferential clasp uh, provide continuous encirclement discontinuous or broken encirclement is, is in the case of bark clasp which must have at least three point contact at the abutment to surface mean what is bark clasp the bark clasp should must have at least three point contact on the to surface but uh, it is uh, the broken encircle uh, in it provide broken encirclement or discontinuous but the uh, circumferential clasp means it uh, surround us uh, the whole circumference of the tooth we will discuss in next video about detail in circumferential and gingival approaching clasp next uh, the last uh, property the last requirement of the clasp assembly is the 
passivity mean clasp should be passive when seated completely when clasp seated completely on the bedwin tooth it must be passive it should not exert any pressure on the tooth unless dislodging force is applied during removal or function when we apply dislodging force during removal or function it exert pressure on the tooth but if there is no dislodging force during removal or function it should not exert any pressure on the on to the tooth this is known as passivity mean it should be passive it should not exert any pressure this is all about retainer in the next video we will discuss about circumferential clasp and its type now today our topic is complete if you like my video press the like button and share this video with your friends if you new to my channel subscribe my channel by pressing the red subscribe button and also press the bell icon in order to receive my each new video notification for watching my videos i am very thankful to you thank you very much